Welcome back to Healthy Rebel Radio. My name is Dr. David Dizer. This is episode 142, and I'm here with my co-host, Amy Lane. Good morning. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to Healthy Rebel Radio. So excited to be back on uh, on the air, on our podcast, speaking with you, Amy. Mm. You excited? I'm very excited. For all of you who have been asking for us to get back to it, thank you for the motivation. It, it does push us. It, it, just to know that you want to hear us talk about these things we're interested about is extremely motivating. In the chaos that is our current life, it's a really... Um, positive motivation to hear you guys say we miss you we want to hear your you know opinion on this or we need new episodes when are you coming back it's been I've I've really enjoyed that it's fueled me and like really motivated me to do this instead of say sleep which I should be doing and she's not kidding because she'll go the whole night without sleeping and then wake up in the morning and say um I want a podcast yeah people are asking me people come to my clinic um, to see me as patients and they're like, you know, I found out about you because I just like listening to you and your wife talk. I'm like, That's so kind. That's so kind. It's really kind. That's wonderful because we really enjoy doing it. It's a really healthy, wonderful outlet for us and it's a way for us to communicate with others in a different platform. I'm very used to writing and communicating with people that way. So, um, and sometimes I think I'm misinterpreted because I do have, you know, some passionate opinions, but I'm not, you know. That's totally fair. Right. So I think speaking is a really healthy way for me to communicate my, and also come back to things and circle back around and think, ah, guys, I said this a little harshly. I didn't mean it in that capacity. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just very passionate. Definitely. Yet yeah, this is episode 142. We haven't posted an episode since 2017. Mm. We've been busy. Things have happened. Things have changed. Mm. So we'd like to start today's episode by talking a little bit about our life. Mm. We, uh, we're parents. We have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Well, she's turning one in uh, in two weeks. He, and he, he changed his tone on that because I'm very sensitive to saying our children are a certain age before they're the age. I'm one of those moms. I always made fun of those moms that were like, gosh, how could you mourn aging? It's such, obviously, it's the best thing in the world. And now I'm very sensitive to saying my children's age before their age. So she's not one yet. In a couple weeks, she'll be one. Being a parent is so weird. It's, Everything changes. It changes everything. I was the best mom before I had kids. Oh my gosh, totally. You should, I, I was giving dad's advice, I think. Oh, I've, I've said things. Well, and I want to take this opportunity to publicly apologize to all the moms. And there's about probably 3,000 of you that I worked with before I had children. Now, the advice I never gave was, it was never harmful. I always uh, made sure that, you know, I was gentle and made sure that everybody was getting everything they needed and I tried to be kind to everyone. But the advice I gave and not understanding the complexity of children and just little things like I have not slept myself for four hours in a row for over three years. And I didn't understand that A, that was a thing, Mm -hmm. or B, what that does to you as a human. It, it complete. It doesn't matter what you're capable of, or what your passions are, or uh, what your priorities are, or how wonderful you set up your day, or how healthy you are. It doesn't matter. It, it, it changes it, it, the fundamental. It not. changes your brain capacity. It changes your physical energy output. It changes your mental emotional state, and it makes things dramatically more difficult mm-hmm. to accomplish. Now, I say that but you can still get a lot done. But I just want to say when I was, you know, people would message me and be like, I just don't understand in my day how I'm supposed to work out five times a week. And I'd be like, you know, do your kids nap as soon as they're napping, do that, whatever. I didn't understand. Yeah. I didn't understand that a, like some kids use you as a human soother. So you're trapped in that nap and you can (laughs) never get away from them. I didn't understand some kids only nap in a stroller. So you, no matter what the weather, have to walk around for two hours if you want to have a nice rest of your day because there's nothing worse than an unrested child. Or I didn't understand that, you know, nap time means you can actually think for a second while you wash dishes or you'll never have another clean dish in your house. I had no idea. Or you have to work. Like, I just didn't understand. Or that 
some kids don't sleep yeah, ever. And, and then there's the, my first child where it's like people would be like, well, you know, there's four hours a day where they nap. You take you time. You sleep. No, she never napped. Anyway, my point is I apologize for the advice from coming from a place of just being completely naive. Totally, totally. And, you know, coming from a place of really trying to help people feel it's, good. It's always my genuine, like, and I always come from the place of the way to have a healthy home. I firmly believe that the woman of the home, the, the mother role of the home, your mental, emotional atmosphere is the tone of your home. Absolutely. So you being emotionally happy and nourished is the tone of your whole family. I, you know, I think we're the bedrock of the family. And then also the concern of just being physically healthy for yourself is the only way to feel good. Right. And then obviously modeling for your children and being around for your children, mm-hmm. you know? It, it, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally. you gotta, you got to be there. It's, it's tough. And it's tough. It's like you have we to We have train. a deep respect. We, things have... Deep respect. You have to train physically, mentally, yeah, emotionally, like spiritually. Like a pro athlete. Like, being a parent is yeah, like being a pro you, athlete. Ha- you have to be. So if, we've got it, this deep you know, respect. Definitely. And it's just changed. Like we always obviously honored the parents. We've always um, thought parents are the best yeah, and yeah. just take on. I now never, when we see them, we're like, I see you. I, I like bow. I actually <laughs> give like a head nod. How many like, kids do you have? Like <laughs> I know. Saw, remember we saw those people on the ferry? We saw those people on the ferry and they had four kids in front of us. And we're like, wow, you have four kids. And then the, the mom's like, we have eight. Yeah, there's, yeah. There, was it the, eight or nine? Yeah, it was like the, so many. The rest are teenagers. In the the rest are in the car. I was just like, what's the car? What's the car? It was a van. It was a big, a, a, a mini bus. It was, anyway. On the I ferry, just, amazing. Obviously, she's a better human than all of us. Well, they were so zen. They were like, so zen. where do you live? We live on a very small island and we have acres and acres and they just run. Amazing. Yeah, it was awesome. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. So this is our public apology. Yeah, just for... You know, not fully getting certain aspects of being a parent while trying to be your best self. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's amazing how not really getting you go from not really getting it to in one day getting it. Well, and I mean, and in, in some of it's a slow burn. Like I, as a human being, and I've talked about this before, um, who I am is completely ingrained with being an entrepreneur. And having success, and I do air quote success, and success to me is being, you know, financially independent, helping people genuinely, fueling, just putting positive and good into the world in from my perspective. And I've been, you know, quote, on that hustle since I was like 14 years old. Right. I've been a chronic entrepreneur. So there was no um, separation between Amy Entrepreneur and Amy Human. So once True came and I thought that I was going to give birth to her and eight weeks later, she'd be with a nanny and I'd be fully engrossed back this. into my business yes. because this is who I am. Right. That was, it blew my mind that mm-hmm. like I was looking at her and I was like, I want to be here. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. I want to be part of this. Aside from the fact that she was the type of child that she needed me. Yeah, we had, we had made a decision before she came to do something called attachment parenting at least a version of it a version of it and then when it, it, it didn't really matter it was the way to go based on who she was anyways it, it she demanded it yeah it didn't it, it was kind of our like oh this feels right right but then who she was as a human there was no other choice so do you think that on day one you had an identity change no day well like I obviously knew I was going to love a human, right. but like I fought with my sister. I remember like a week before I had the children, uh, before I had true, um, saying, she was saying to me like, yes, you love David and you understand love. And yes, you love me. And yes, you love your nephews. And yes, you love your dog, but something different's about to happen to you. I was like, no, <laughs> Like, I you would don't know me. die for David right. right now if someone asked me. Like, I am loyal. I am ride or die. Oh. Phew. I'm you, ride or die with my friends. None of y'all know. None of y'all know. Once you're in my inn, yeah. like, I'm ride or die. But as I sat there when I gave birth to True. And I literally, and I mean, you know, it's kind of corny because it's like the thing. But I, I just, I didn't sleep. I stared at her. Yeah. For like five hours straight. Yeah. And I don't think I stopped smiling. My heart amazing literally grew. Wow. 
it's different. Yeah, it is different. All that being said, no shade to the moms that like stay connected to totally. the hustle. No, no. I, I, I also mourned that. Oh, I, I mourned, a deep, a deep mourning. I cried often and the tears, Dave would be like, what's wrong? Like, are you not happy? And I'd be like, I just want to get back to hustle Amy. Mm-hmm. Like, I want that. You need like, that piece of me. I need it. I love it. But I was also sad that I was okay with putting it on the back burner for well, like it was also, a very strange mix of emotions it's a strange mix it's a strange mix especially you know and there's 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 a bit of pressure associated with it, with it as well like you're spending your days before this helping people you don't really know mm-hmm. and then everything changes and you've got this deep connection and you look down at your inbox and there's 12,000 emails yeah it was really hard i had to shut down and it's my like, email okay what am i going to do because oh well we deleted it <laughs> i had to delete my email <laughs> because okay, it whoops. got so out of control <laughs> and like also i love my members Mm -hmm. and my clients and my community like i genuinely and i'm not blowing smoke i genuinely adore it's impossible to blow smoke when you're 3 a.m in the morning and you're writing an email back to someone that you've never met in person and i adore them yeah and i because i have a strong deep like mothering desire and that's the other thing that i realized it was always like a mothering desire where a lot of my i always called it hustle but i genuinely have a deep passionate concern with helping women especially feel loved self-secure self-secure and optimized Mm -hmm. i genuinely do oh yeah when i see another woman shine i like slow clap every time absolutely like i love it it. feels so good it feels so good to see another person realized you know and i think that it's it's just so healthy for all the other women Mm just like as soon as a woman shine like it's just and it all starts with like those small fundamental now we have a lot of stories to go through in this podcast Mm. i mean that that makes me think of uh the 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 first time i looked in your fridge Mm. so what what part of what she's describing is understanding that people go through plateaus when it comes to weight loss and how stressful Mm. that can be Mm -hmm. and how we practice the holistic approach to weight loss and mental blocks the first time i looked in your fridge Mm mm-hmm and there was one yogurt and one apple. <laughs> and I said, what are you eating? This like, is when, when I had a, a home on the East Coast. By the, yeah, this was, this was before uh, mm-hmm. the nutritionist. Mm-hmm. This was before, this was, mm-hmm. this was pre this life. Mm-hmm. Pre this life. And, and it was like, I'm trying to lose 30 pounds. This mm-hmm. is all I eat. Mm-hmm. Yet I don't lose anything. Yeah. And what kind of struggle that can be. It was torture. So now I know that when you see that in other people, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I know that. Well, and I'm always trying to say there's a better way. Right. And that's why it's so funny because a lot of people, I've been called out um, by cynics that have said things to the effect of, um, you know, you're holistic and you're natural, but, uh, you know, a lot of your program, one of your main programs is bikini body bump. Yeah. Uh, program and people will say that doesn't you know think oh, i gotcha mm-hmm. there's inconsistency and it's like no you don't understand where i'm coming from i'm trying to trap me mm-hmm. i'm trying to catch me right. that 10 years ago or not oh god it's more than 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> haven't been back Whoops. if like 14 years ago yeah that's what i was googling right that's what i wanted that's all the books on the shelf i was buying and if i had found me Instead of finding, uh, eat one yogurt and one apple a day for two months. Sounds like a good plan. Sounds great. Yeah. It made my body and hormones and my system just plummet into like despair. Mm-hmm. All, and also my mental, emotional well-being. Anyway, we, we'll go that in another time. But I'm trying to get me. Because there's no shame in wanting to look hot in a bathing Absolutely suit. Absolutely not. No, there's for no sure. shame. But then when I can get in a conversation with you and say, hey, you know how you look really hot? Mm -hmm. You start from the inside. And we make you feel good. We make you feel fueled, rested, energized. Then you're sexy. Mm -hmm. Then whatever, if you want. And also, I'm tired of everyone saying like, aligning you know, body shaming with like a a grown woman wanting to have abs. If you want to go for that. It's nothing more, you know, detrimental than running a marathon as long as you come from the healthy, wonderful, well-adjusted perspective of it. And that's that's, right. that's why I want you to Google me. Yes, absolutely. You know? Oh, thank you for sharing. We'll, we'll, we'll go deep into the, the other aspects of it at another time. Yeah, and also, like, if you want to hear more stories within all the different aspects of this, comment. Yeah. You know? Let us let know, us know what you want us to dive into because we have a plethora of stories. There's, I've lived a few lives now. Oh, yeah. Have we? I think we both have at this point. 
Yeah. Someone said that to me the other day in person. I was at a kid's birthday party because that's what that's I'm what doing do. now on yes. the weekends. Absolutely. got to get to those parties. <laughs> um, and this mom, I was talking about her life and I was saying how David was a naval officer and went to RMC and uh, what that all was and that I owned homes on the East Coast that I flipped a couple homes and I owned a little spa. And she was like, how old are you two? <laughs> <laughs> Right. It just made me laugh. I was yeah, like, for sure. oh yeah, like we went through our 20s and 30s, like in our teens and 20s. Definitely. It's weird. Yeah. What, what, how old were you when you left home? I left home at 16. Yeah. Yeah. And I left you home left at 17. 17. Yeah, 17. So we've been um, financially and emotionally and spiritually independent mm-hmm. since we were 16 and 17, respectively. That's yeah, a crazy. long time now. That's a minute. <laughs> That's a minute. Well, someone said to me the other day something to the effect of, oh, um, something about growing up in a small town. Right. And uh, the strong roots to a small town, whatever. And I like was running the numbers. And I was like, but I've lived in a city. Yeah. I moved to the city when I was 19. Wow. And I haven't been back to a town. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Gosh, I haven't thought about that. And I'm it's going to be long- 37. Is it, so is it longer I'm now? I'm going to be 37. Almost. Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah. That's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, Oh, wow. I didn't say it out loud because <laughs> yeah, I try sure. to pretend I'm younger on the streets. <laughs> 29. <laughs> I'm always 29. True thinks I'm 29. Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah. She always will. Mm-hmm. So so we were talking about having kids and how there's this identity change. And, mm. and coming from this health background and being really into our own personal health and mm. being kind of, you know selfish to a certain extent. like we 100% have have... selfish. We always want to help people and channel whatever, but like... We were selfish. Well, it's now, okay. There's no shade. No shade. Now we're in the lane of deep responsibility health-wise for these kids. I, that's the biggest shift I see in you as a, as a human. Mm-hmm. You've always wanted to run faster, jump higher, get, you know, see what you can do. Like the numbers, blah, 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 diamond, diamond. Yeah. and you've always been that guy. And I always respect that. It gives me anxiety, but it also pushes me. Okay. Um, but the biggest change I've seen in you, and it's a genuine change, is that your health and wellness goals now are about having energy to be present with the children, with it, how hard you work, um, and then also being here. Yeah. Which, like, I hate to think about. It makes me, like, totally. very emotional. But it's a very responsible and intelligent. And, and wow. it's true. You're living it. You're trying, like, you are, you know, through actual research and data, carving out the path for us to live I mean, you know, as long as everything goes and there's no outside forces, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. live a long life and be here, present, physically, mentally, emotionally, and hopefully for a long time for our children. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's so important. Like, nice. There's such sweet, sweet kids. Oh, and... I want to see everything. Oh, uh, my it's goodness. a different, it's a different motivation. It's totally different. I had never been for lab work before. And now I'm like, okay, I gotta get my cholesterol checked. Mm. Are you allowed I to mean, say you had a full body MRI? Or? I had a full body MRI. Are we, are we going to I had a cancer that? scan, my friends. Yeah, a full body MRI just to... Absolutely. Well, even with myself, I w- I've always been very holistic in the way I approach things. And I've shied away from a lot of testing. Mm-hmm. And I've been, we, you have to say, a lot more proactive in my testing instead of just... You have been. You have been. I'm a lot more comfortable thinking about mortality than you are. And... Um, I, that, I still have some wounds still have some wounds which is okay you know it, 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 it honestly to think about mortality it takes practice it's hard i think about mortality in a different way that you don't enjoy though how's that oh that i don't I, enjoy i'm pretty dark yeah you're, you can get very dark i have a very dark sense of humor mm-hmm. and i have a very dark um i'm very comfortable thinking dark yeah like if something's going not well a lot of the times i'll set things into perspective of like but we're all gonna die and david will be like <laughs> Okay, back it up. Yeah, yeah. We're just trying to figure out where to park. Remember? <laughs> this is not, you Remember? Know. No, you're, you're like, remember Buddhism? None of this matters. Well, that's what I'll, I'll go it's into. Okay. I don't mean like, yeah, I'll, I'll go into like, at the end of the day, none of it's going to matter. Yeah. We're all going to be dead. Whatever. And Dave's like, okay, okay um, let's so... just choose what we're going to have for dinner. <laughs> we don't need to go there today. Oh my God. But I do that's that. so funny. You do. But you do healthy mortality. Okay, well, that's kind. You do. Um, so, so there's, so there's us personally Mm. and now there's these kids and as a parent, it's like, you know, it's enough to look after yourself, Mm -hmm. but now you've got to think about what to feed them. You've got to think about that. They need proper sleep cycles. You've got to think about mental, emotional atmosphere, atmosphere. like 
we talk about influence influencers a lot. Mm. It seemed like in one day we became pro influencers mm. for precious precious children. And also witnessing now that True is three and she's about thirteen, um, <laughs> how strong the outside influences are they on are her. Strong, and, strong. You know, we've had to remove her from social certain social situations. We've had to shift. You know, who we spend more time with, and nothing bad about those people. It's just certain things trigger her. As yeah, a human. definitely. We've had to reflect on ourselves. Oh, we've had to change our behavior. Mm-hmm. One thing I will say, like that. I mean, and I'm working on it. Obviously, I'm not great. I am a, a very passionate person. Yes. So anything I'm passionate about, I end up basically yelling and using my hands. Right now, talking, I am. Yeah. True thinks that's fighting. Right. So David and I will be in a conversation and he'll say, you know, whatever, whatever happened at work today. Um, I need to get a new key made. I lost my key. I'll say, and I'll use my hands and passionately say, well, what do you mean? Did you drop it? Yeah, right. In that tone. And True Tru will literally look at me and say, whoa, 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 no fighting. <laughs> no fighting. <laughs> and we, then I have oh to turn goodness. to her and say, oh, honey, I'm not fighting. Yeah, right. I'm. This is how I talk and she's not having it. Mm-hmm. So I've had to really so, shift so. and try to tone it down. We read about this. It's like when they hear, when they hear um, yelling intensity, intensity, it doesn't yeah. have to be negative or positive. They think that they've done something wrong. It's mm-hmm. like ingrained. Which is so funny because, not funny, but I totally know that yeah, as can, a human yeah. because I grew up, my father, he was a beautiful man, but he had really high anxiety. Yeah. So as a child, before I could even articulate what this was about him, his unsettledness, I always thought he was unhappy with me. Wow. And he never yeah. like said that, you know, to, until, you know, I was a teenager, whatever, but yeah, like certain things. as a young child, like. I, anxious about whatever didn't matter. He was anxious. You thought it was you. I, every time he was unhappy, and I felt that vibe from him. Like yeah. he didn't do anything unhappy. I felt an anxious energy from him, and he wasn't like relaxed and happy, yeah. Dad. I literally thought there was something wrong with me. So I mean, I should know that, mm-hmm. but I had to like read the study to. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, and, and now we have a child who says, um, "Daddy, you don't like me." Yeah. It's like, oh no, we love you so much. Yeah, We're if she feels the vibe is something up, totally yeah, different. She'll be like, you don't like me. Yeah. The other day, I was exhausted because I was up all night with our younger daughter that's teething, and I was playing with True while um, Ever was napping, and I was just kind of had my head in my hands, and I was sitting there, whatever. And she came up and she got in my face and she said, "Mommy, are you not happy?" Oh. And it broke my heart. I oh said, my "Oh, goodness. sweetheart," I said, "I'm just exhausted." Yeah. She said, "Well, maybe you should sleep." I said, oh "Maybe, my goodness. maybe." Hot tip. Yeah. Hot tip. But she took that as I wasn't happy with her. Right. And that, you know. Oh my goodness. And before, like, before she could articulate those things, right. and some children don't articulate those things. Mm-hmm. I don't think I articulated them. I didn't feel I comfortable articulating didn't. them. So. You know, it's a really healthy reminder. Like, we're very lucky that she is as vocal as she Absolutely. is. Absolutely. So, th- thanks to your guidance, we've been doing vibe training. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've had to talk about it a lot because mm-hmm. we've had to change a ton of patterns. We have a we have code word in our family. Code word. And we say river. River. When someone's vibe is off. <laughs> so we read this book about um, what you want to do is you want to keep the kayak in the center of the river. Mm-hmm. You don't want to swing all the way to the anger side or all the way you to the side. don't want to do the rapids side. or you don't want to just... You have to that's river. Right. river, river, river. So that's what we. Do. The problem you, you, you just can't you can't yell river, and that's what I'll do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> river, river. Oh, yeah. oh geez, it's a different time. I'm sure we'll have tons and tons of stories to share that are on the health progress. side of things. We are a work in progress. Well, it is all health. It is all health. Yeah, and you know, now you you're all probably familiar with the the wave of mental emotional well being that has taken the mainstream. Um, for an absolute good reason. Which has always been my deepest passion. Absolutely. Yeah. We In, in naturopathic medicine, we actually did a study at the uh, at the college where I'm a board member. And, and um, a study showed that the main reason people go to see naturopathic doctors is for anxiety and depression. Mm. And um, I thought that was interesting. I, I, could, I, didn't, I wouldn't have predicted it. I would have said digestive or hormonal. Mm. But it's... Superficially, an, it, yeah. I would say that too. But obviously. It's anxiety and depression. Obviously. You know, it's, it's heavy. And, you know, we've... We've been on both sides of the spectrum, and we've had to river ourselves for 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 that even before having kids. Mm. And um, now that we have kids, it's like, okay, we gotta, we have to re, we have yeah. to really good good at this. And um, you know, we've been working on it. Yeah, 
yeah, well, as two humans, we did the thing I would not suggest. And we married partners that really fun guys. Here's a fun one for you. We have different types of anxiety. So not only do we each have anxiety coming from different corners, we are not compassionate about each other's anxiety. And each other's anxiety gives us rage because we think it's not logical. And that's the best so part true. That's a it. really good way to explain it. It's, a, it's the best. <laughs> you got it down. You've thought about this. I've analyzed it a few times. Sat with it, one might say. Yeah, I, it's, it's obvious that you've thought about this a lot because that is exactly how it is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we've been working on it, and it's, it's an ongoing process. You know, in my practice, we work a lot with high cortisol and high adrenaline and, and mm-hmm. different types of stress responses. And, um, you know, we've had to apply some of that to ourselves and, and, and take certain things seriously. If you haven't tried meditation yet, it's almost 2020. Meditation mm-hmm. equals good. Meditation and journaling. journaling. Not as in oh, key. Dear Diary. Well, I mean, maybe that is for you, but not for me. Um, like thought dumping, I yes, call it. Yes, right. If you, especially if you don't have someone to speak with. You know, in certain circumstances, it's not appropriate to continually share what's going on. It's appropriate to write right. it down. Yeah. And, and also, it allows you to reflect sometimes a little better. And you realize that it works. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You just let it out. You yeah. put it down and you can walk away it from it. It loses its power, I think. 100% and you're getting it out. There's something about physically getting it out. Mm-hmm. I don't I can't explain that. That's probably you know part of the reason why we find doing podcasting quite therapeutic as well. Mm-hmm. Because you know we're getting out these ideas, you know, it's, sometimes I can ramble on to you about things I'm passionate about Mm -hmm. and not really find the key in it. Mm -hmm. But podcasting is very organized thought Mm -hmm. um, expression. Mm -hmm. Like, this is important to us. Mm -hmm. Let's explain this. Mm -hmm. And if people find value in it, that's amazing. Wow, yeah. So part of that um, is our our recent newsletter that we put out this week. We're we're back into the newsletter blogging game. We put out a Mm -hmm. newsletter about the 5-2 diet, but it's really about how counting calories doesn't work. Girl, preach. Who's been saying that now for over a decade? You've been there. You've been there. It's, so- you know, it's funny. When, when, when something works or doesn't work for you, mm. there's a big audience for that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's, I tested it on myself. I mean, calorie restriction was my jam. Mm-hmm. Never got anywhere with it. Um, lost superficial weight, you know, on these fad diets and then would balloon up bigger than before. Yeah. It was a hormonal, emotional, anxiety mess. Um, for a long time, but also just from working with the sheer number of women that I've worked with, the Mm -hmm. women that come in the door and are like gripping onto their calorie counting and refuse to let it go, don't have success. Right. End of story. They just don't. Mm -hmm. Until you get to like an elite athlete level where you're counting macros to do something. That's totally different. Because that's very specific. We have to understand, and just this is a little side note. Athletes are a different beast. Well, and this is where, like, when I use the abs thing, like, yes, that is achievable for some amount of women, whatever. But that's one thing. Um, for a while, I used to write recipes for Oxygen Magazine. Yes. And I feel like that magazine was a bit of detriment to oh, yeah. women mm-hmm. during that period. Women like me. Totally. In that, I thought if I just work really, really hard in a normal capacity... I can achieve that body. You're going to be ripped. Nope. No, that's not Especially how it works. Especially not as a woman. You have to be an athlete to mm-hmm. be that woman. An athlete means sacrifice. It does. End of story. It is pinpoint focus. It is no room for fun. It is athlete. Mm-hmm. And I use fun like as in like being loose. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a regimen. Uh, how about just enjoying food? No, it's, they're not enjoying no, food. It's You got to let that go. It's all like thought delete. This is my focus. If and if that's what you want, you go for it. Absolutely, you be Get that. It. Get after but it. But that's not life. No, and and this we're talking ninety nine point nine percent of people are not going to be able to. That's do just that. it. Yeah. And like out of my clients, I can think of like one that she could like she's standing out to me right now. First of all, I've worked with women that wanted that, and they've mm-hmm. got it because that was their focus. That's all they wanted. Yes, they worked, and then they did that. And that's amazing and good for them. It's like anybody that like runs marathons, whatever. Like that's your thing. But this one woman I can think of that stood out that genetically was just primed yeah. that she took my program and became looking like that. Yes. Now. She kind of got it by accident. 
what she was set for. She put in the work. Let's not. She get did it. it. She but, put but in the work. She, but, but her body, like I did the same thing, and I'm just not gonna have that yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. That's not the shape that my body's gonna go. And that's always about being real- realistic. Oh, I'm with you. I, totally. Oh, goodness, this this post we put out was about um, uh, the study that compared um, uh, just cutting calories every single day for six mm-hmm. months mm-hmm. versus doing the five two diet. Right. Five two diet is for two days a week eat 500 calories, and mm-hmm. for the other five days you just eat normally. Mm-hmm. And we first became familiar with this, or at least I did, when we heard that Jimmy Kimmel had done it, and that's how he lost all his weight. Mm-hmm. It's like wow, he did really well. And then looking into it, it's like been really popular in the UK for a long time. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, I was becoming very interested in, in intermittent fasting and mm-hmm. prolonged water fasting and, and low calorie diets and all these different things and um, keto and low carb in general. And I'm realizing that, wow, they did this for six months, these two groups of people. Mm-hmm. And the people who did the uh, just everyday calorie reduction, mm-hmm. my gosh, they had a harder time. For example, they were more mm-hmm. hungry. They were mm-hmm. just annoyed because they were cutting calories every single day. Mm-hmm. So they're deprived every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And they lost less weight mm. than the people who just cut calories significantly for two days per week. Mm-hmm. I found that so fascinating. And I have to believe, and of course I would from my camp, that the mental and emotional reaction to that is the biggest factor. Definitely. Because when you can look forward to, oh, today I'm not, I can't have the pasta, but in a couple of days I can. Mm-hmm. There, there it there's is. some freedom in that. And it's like, I mean, of course, I'm going to go into giving birth. I always have to bring this up in every conversation. <laughs> but Whenever I talk, I'm talking about giving birth. <laughs> when I open my mouth now. No, this woman once said to me before I went into labor, I said, like, give me something. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. And uh, she said, just know you can do anything for 24 hours. Yeah. And I've carried that through so many wow. things now. Powerful. Because it's so true. Yeah. And like with that, you can do anything for two days. Definitely. You can you cannot eat the candy for two days. You can do it. You you're a grown person, you're gonna make it. It's easier than, than cutting calories it's, every well, single day. Well it's because you're saying, Okay, for the rest of your life you can't have blank that, that you love. Really is unfortunate. And that mindset says, you know what? Apple the inner, crisp is the, off the table. Are you kidding well, me? Well the inner child in you is gonna say, you know what? Up yours. I'm going to go get it right now. (laughs) You don't know me. And the hilarious part of that is the only person you're hurting is yourself. Yeah. It's so funny. Like, it's so strange. But we're all guilty of that. It's like we get rebellious within our own being and then we hurt ourselves. We do. Plus, there's the environmental impact. I don't want to say this is everything, but in in, in the next 30 seconds, I could get some carbs into my body if I really needed to. Oh, it's... uh, like not only that we live above a grocery store mm. or in the vicinity of a grocery store, but we could live like there's carbs on every corner. Mm. It's wild. Mm-hmm. It's so and easy. And good carbs. Good stuff too. So, you know, the environmental impact is there, but mm. you're right. It's like, especially when it's impacting your thought processes in this way. It's yeah. Like, holy smokes. So, I mean, for me, and same with like the idea of fasting for 13 hours at night, which I think we should all be doing. Yeah. Now it's like you can do anything for like that many hours. It's do not it. a big deal. You're okay. You're going to be fine. In the morning you can have whatever. And you know, I'm a big believer now in like if you're not going to eat something at night and blah, blah, blah. You know, if you put away like say you want to have those carbs and I'm a big believer in not having carbs at night. And if you're going to go into like an all night fast, like put that pasta dish that your family's having for dinner, put it away and have it for breakfast when you break your fast. Definitely. It's Literally perfect. nothing wrong with that. No, that's absolutely perfect. Yeah, and it, and it flips the switch on so many people. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we, you're saying to yourself, "Yes, I can have this." So mentally, emotionally, you feel like rested. Yeah. Plus, you have like that thing to look forward to, and the the craziest part is, is that over time, that thing that you're craving gets healthier and healthier and healthier. Right. Once you reset yourself, your mental, emotional taste buds. All of it. It loses control. Totally loses control, and you're in control. Like you saying about pastries around the corner and stuff, it means nothing to me. No, that's like, amazing. I'm never triggered. Yeah. Because I'm in a different zone. You you have been talking about postponing treats for a long time. Yes. It's part of the original program that you had. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you're allowed to have one or two treats per week, mm-hmm. and here's but how planned. we do it. You set it ahead. You don't just free fall. Yes. And that really works for people. And I'm also a big believer in treat or alcohol. Yeah. Not both. Not both. But what I've been trying to help people with is we, we, we postpone mm-hmm. and then we start to become comfortable with hunger. It's a normal and, part of being right? a human. So many people are scared of being hungry. Well, you know, we're used to not being hungry. Totally we're get ta- it. First of all, we're taught not to be hungry at it from a young age. Mm-hmm. 
Like you got to eat. You need to grow. Mm-hmm. You'd be healthy. And then as an adult, there are so many benefits to hunger. We now know that, that the hunger signal that you're sensing in your brain is the the is it an initiating factor or part of the initiating factor of all the benefits you get from fasting, mm-hmm. which is improved immune mm-hmm. response, clean DNA cleanup, digestion reset, a bunch of different things happen when you're fasted. Mm-hmm. And just having that hunger signal, that's the signal that, oh, all these other things are happening. It mm-hmm. probably contrib the signal is probably part of the contrib plays a contributing role, but you know they're all going on when you have mm-hmm. that signal. So it's good to be hungry sometimes. Excuse me, sometimes. One hundred percent. And I also think you don't know a lot about yourself till you actually get a little bit strict with yourself and let yourself get hungry and I know it sounds crazy but I don't think until I learned about actual hunger eating cycles that are natural in the way that we're supposed to be I was just covering so much up with like putting food on top of it yeah and like you're almost in like a food cloud in your head right and for myself and for a lot of women hormonally mm-hmm. It's like this terrible cycle and you don't get it until you kind of break off with that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. There, there's this discipline aspect. That when, when you start to feel the hunger mm-hmm. signal, you, you get a little bit of practice with discipline mm-hmm. and it bleeds over into other things. Mm-hmm. It bleeds over into exercise. Mm-hmm. It bleeds over maybe into work because work, you're not and, eating. You're just... And also working more um, effectively versus just sporadic. Right. And, and for me, like controlling social media, like yes. stop flipping up on social media all the time. Like the, yesterday I had five t- seconds to myself and I like open up social media and I'm like, what am I doing? I have nothing to look <laughs> at. I'm spending my time here? I have nothing to look at. For sure. It's crazy. And part of it, and there's the anxiety response that's associated with it. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I can do a whole episode on my oh. my abusive relationship with social media. Totally. I'm a child, people. So, so oh, there, I mean, there's so much to speak on there. We won't go into it. I will talk say, hours to caveat that. all this, because there's going to be somebody that's had, like, a past experience with eating disorders. And, like, I feel like um, words like discipline and control and hunger can oh, yeah. be triggers for people. Absolutely. And I'm honor you. I see you. Yeah. This is not what we're talking about. And if any of this does trigger you go in the direction that doesn't trigger you until you're healed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's such a, a low percentage percentage of the population. But they're very loud and very passionate As they because, should be, because their you know, problem it's, is it's, very real oh for them. Oh my gosh. And scary. This scary. is, this is a good caveat and a good, pivot into my Amy doesn't do comedy. <laughs> we have a new segment to present. We're going to have segments on our show. Um, maybe three or four different segments. Mm-hmm. Our first segment that we're going to be introducing today is a segment that we call Amy does not do stand up. Amy, and, can you tell us about this segment? Okay, so if you're easily offended, you're going to want to skip through <laughs> this. This is not for you. I'm a little dark and a little sassy. So, this is not for you. Uh, and so yeah, one of my things I like to think about. I'm, I'm a person that contemplates a lot of things. I think a lot. Yes. Um, I love, <laughs> as soon as I say this name, everyone's going to be like, girl, but not about this person, but the joke that used to be um, Louis C.K.'s joke. Okay, hold on. Before you get into Louis C.K., tell, let me tell them about this, what the what the, the segment is. Are you going to oh. say what the segment is? Mm. The segment is that we watch a lot of stand-up. Yes. We watch a lot of stand-up, and when we're watching, we just can't help but brainstorm ideas for stand-ups. And we're not funny at all. Not funny. But there, so many things come up when you hear someone do a bit about something yes. like that triggers you to say, oh, yeah. this would be a really good because bit too, something of, from our life. Well, and because a lot of comedy, when it's done like intelligently, makes you think. Right. Because it's pulling on the bits of like, this is what we're not supposed to say in society, or this is something yes. we're not allowed to say in public. If you were a comedian, your style would be saying something that is probably true and really funny. And also inappropriate. Okay, tell me. Okay. So he has this segment that, that he talks about, and it's the, um, of course, but maybe. So like oh, you talk right. about of something. Of course, but maybe. I remember you this. You talk about something so like, good. obviously. So to the effect of like people with eating disorders. Obviously, that's horrible. Obviously, we have deep compassion. It is very serious. You know, there are a percentage of people in the world that have had a terrible experience with, you know, not eating enough food, starving themselves, all those things. That is real. That Mm -hmm. is dark. Totally honor that. But the way we've moved into it, maybe we should just loosen up a little. 
because the percentages aren't there. So people will say to me... And how we talk about it, yes. And how we talk about it. So um, people will say to me, you know, like, aren't you triggering people into eating disorders? Isn't that your main concern? All these girls... This initially happened with the bikini body, right? Right. All these girls are feeling pressure and you're adding to the pressure of whatever, whatever, and girls are getting eating disorders. You shouldn't talk about losing weight. I just want to say factually, and I don't have the numbers, I did have them, you know, I think it's 40 something percent of Canadians and Americans are overweight. In the overweight category at least. in overweight category. And then I think it's 3 to 8 percent have suffered with actual starvation related diets. Oh, is it that high? Okay, yeah. There's still a major difference, even if it is that high. So of course... I honor those people. Definitely. And it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. But maybe the numbers that these people are actually going to die from being overweight. Yeah, we need to talk about. Are way more important right now. Like that's where the life raft needs to go. So of course that's, you know. (laughs) Of course. Yeah, eating disorders are awful. But maybe we should be talking more about restriction. Because... There are w- just like flat out, there are way more people with a weight problem. Absolutely. And those weight problems turn into chronic disease, and cancer. Soci- oh my it's, goodness. It's, Society is getting heavier it's super and heavier real. and heavier. Like, n- people aren't getting skinnier because of body shaming. No. And I'm not body shaming. I don't believe in shame. I, I'm a vegan. I don't shame. That, that's not my style. Like sure. I don't preach. That's not who I am. But... I'm going to highlight yeah, what I think Yeah, we need to lose some weight. We all need Absolutely. to lose weight. Yeah. Got to get rid of some fat. Well, it's like the the bariatric surgeons of, of I think it's their association of the U.S. are very excited because when um, people do bariatric... bariatric I'm rolling my eyes. Bariatric surgery, they have 30% less cancer mm-hmm. than people who don't, why, who are David? in the same weight category. But Why? Is it the surgery, David? It's not the surgery, my friend. Mm. It's definitely not the mm-hmm. surgery. It's the amount of food that can get into that body. So it's calorie restriction, healthy eating. That's what it is. Making them thinner, giving them longevity. So they're acting like they're uh, a cancer prevention tool. No, 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 no. It's it's a calorie reduction, mm-hmm. my friends. And um, bariatric surgery is not the answer to uh, cancer prevention. Mm-hmm. So like we're getting out of hand here. Yeah. We're getting out of hand. Of course, eating disorders are awful, but maybe we need to talk more about. We need to talk more, more about prevalent problems. Yeah, like it, it. That's you know, and there are for people that do have eating disorders and starvation-related eating disorders. There are a plethora of people out there that you know work in a non-triggering manner yeah, that are for good you. Support, definitely, one hundred percent. And, you know, I have worked with people and I've also worked with people that have said, you know what, some of this is too triggering for me and yeah. I've sent them to someone else. For sure. And, you know, so this, this reminds me of Dr. Fung, the, f- the fellow who wrote the obesity code. Mm-hmm. He's a kidney specialist, a nephrologist in Ontario. And um, he is the one who has implemented fasting with his diabetics. Mm-hmm. So his story is like, for uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm paraphrasing much of his story, but his story is that for 20 or 30 years, he's been doing dialysis with diabetics and no one has gotten better. When you do dialysis, Mm -hmm. you do it forever. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Then he started getting them to do fasting. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying if you're a diabetic, you should do fasting because there are implications and you should talk to your your, uh, medical provider about it. But he wrote a book called The Obesity Code. If you want to read it, the idea is let's stop eating Mm -hmm. and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, blood sugar control improves. Mm -hmm. Weight goes down. It doesn't mean forever for everyone that is... Try, gonna try to be a cynic. It's so he's a specialist mm-hmm. in our country talking about restriction and healing people. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Also, I it. also want to say right here there is also a different difference between um, Dave. I work a lot in superficial and um, mental emotional health. Yes, you so do. So feeling good, looking good. Because with, with the holistic approach to weight loss, that's it's that's it's that. that. But you go into actually working with people that have disease and are healing. So like, this is like saying, like I'm saying, take an echinacea for your cold. It helps. And David's saying, here's the, the real protocol for healing, whatever. Like, yeah, I run a, I run a chronic disease clinic. Yeah. So So there's different, um, David gets into more like, this isn't just for someone that is looking to lose 10 pounds. Like the things that you're talking about, this is for someone that's suffering with chronic disease. And this is where David and I, kind of split off yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely thanks for clarifying that mm-hmm. 
this segment is going to be really exciting because because you know so, some of this stuff it it might sound obvious, mm-hmm. you know, but. I was going on and on about um, restriction, Mm -hmm. different types of calorie restriction. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about intermittent fasting a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a fasting mimicking diet. I've been, I did uh, multiple rounds of, of keto. I I wear a blood sugar monitor for a month. By the way, we also have a keto vegan cleanse on the website. We do. We do. Datinghealth.com. It's a good one. You can grab it. It's a good one. And, um, you know, I wasn't thinking much about the crowd who's online, who has eating disorders. Mm -hmm, I know. And it's, you know, it's tough because they can be triggered so easily well, because it's fine, such a tough disease. Well, it's a really fine line. And this is why I like having this platform for me to be able to speak and be saying like, of course, but maybe. And that's why I oh, I love this. And I use it a lot in my life, That yeah. this thing that he said. Obviously, I have compassion for these people. But I'm just getting in our society a little tired of not being able to talk about broad topics or things that need immediate change because we've become so hypersensitive to tiny little groups. It's a very PC time. It's it's too much. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's gone crazy. It it's has. like you can't say anything, mm-hmm. you know. And At I a just, time when we, we have the, the platforms to say whatever we want and people and, are saying things. And I mean, obviously you shouldn't say anything hurt like hurtful and I hear right. people when people have said things like this when the way that you said blank affected me this and yes. obviously I wouldn't just like you know you, that's on you whatever I hear that and if I'm saying something that like genuinely is hurtful or I have a blind spot then of course like I would recant and like feel oh, bad yeah. about that whatever but there are general things that we need to talk about and everybody's sensitivities need to calm down a bit yeah because like I feel like it's time to get the life rafts out and everyone needs to get on. Absolutely. So that, get, like, I feel a very pressured, like, for our, our, for the humans. Like, I know we're all very, especially here in Vancouver, we've been talking about, like, the environment and everything. And, like, it's super important. And everyone's passions are high. But, like, I deeply believe it starts with the way that each human lives their actual individual life. And everything we all do every single day to live is eat. Yes. We all have to. And I think we need radical change in that area. And I can't be concerned saying that and then someone saying, but I was anorexic in the past. You can't tell that person. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. No. We all need freedom. Definitely we do. I'm with you. Mm. This segment's going to be really fun. Mm. And you should see. I mean, if you listen along, you'll see. She's got a lot of these. A lot lot of of really good ones. My phone's loaded down with notes. We're talking, what is it? Three three years? No, two two years at least Mm -hmm. of of keeping keeping notes. Um, lots of good things to talk about. So okay. we'll do lots of these. That's our show for today. Um, so we'll end there. Uh, we want to thank all of you for listening. Thank you for sticking with us. We love you. You yeah, are our driving do. passion. Like our communications and being able to get back to talk to you has been the driving force for me to get back here. I have to go because Ever's crying. She just woke up. Love you all. Talk soon. We will do this every week. We'd like to end the show today by... Um, Letting you know where you can find more about us. Uh, we are on all social channels. Um, Amy's private page is on Instagram uh, at the handle Dami Health, where she posts things about our, our lifestyle, and she's going to be transitioning to a lot more things about holistic weight loss in general that you can you can catch there. So Instagram.com slash Dami Health. You can find uh, me on YouTube at Dami Health. So YouTube.com slash Dami Health. I do some uh, some you know, talking head videos about uh, holistic and integrative wellness uh, topics that I'm really, really interested in. So check us out there. And of course, subscribe to our podcast on all the different podcast channels so you can get more shows like this when we're on iTunes and Google Play and Spotify and all the good places. And finally, you can read uh, articles that we've written, recipes that Amy's done, uh, and learn about our programs at damihealth.com. And uh, you can learn about my my clinical practice there as well and uh, check out more about us. We want to thank you again for listening, and we hope you have a great week, and uh, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.